Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ben in a Bedroom. I'm Chris, and today I wanted to share something with you guys that um, I have used many times. I think it's important that you at least know some of the basics and the fundamentals of how this works, which is how to create tempo changes in your own mix. Now, uh, before I begin, uh, I would like to just kind of give you guys a little heads up and apologize. I haven't been making videos as consistent as consistently as uh, as I've done in the past. I've had a uh, um, basically I got my birthday coming up next week, and I have my girlfriend's birthday literally the day right before. So I've been kind of getting ready and preparing for that. And I'm also I'm in the middle of of writing a new album, so I've been working on songs, and I've been uh, a little selfish, I guess you could say, from the YouTube videos. But um, after next week, after my birthday passes, I should be uh, back on schedule and back on track. So, but let's get uh, into the the facts today, the details um, of what we're gonna do. So, uh, let's say you have a mix, right? And right now, um, if you were to take a look here let's open up our transport window and go to options or no window excuse me hit transport you're gonna see our tempo is at 120 so if we hit play you'll hear the click there we go and it's at 120 pretty cool now let's say you didn't want it at 120 and let's say you're you're trying to be nifty about it um, what you can actually go and do is is find your own tempo. Let's say you already have it in your head. You go and you're going to want to click on the number 120 right here. So click on it. And then you're going to want to find the the letter T on your keyboard. And just go ahead and, and tap to the tempo. So let's go. Uh, la da da dun 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 All right. So it looks like it's at about 109. And then you could check it by hitting play. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Cool. So that's pretty sweet. So that's how you can literally come up with your own tempo from what you got in your head. You can also download some pretty cool apps. Um let's see, the one that I use on my on my phone is I got this tap tempo app. It's literally just called Tap Tempo. And it's very similar. You just open up the app and then you just tap along to uh, the beat that you have in your head. So let's say you're trying to rewrite something um, where eventually the tempo changes. Let's say maybe it goes 120 for the first a few bars. And then let's say at like one uh, at, at bar 41, let's say it all changes. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to. You're gonna go to bar forty one, and what you're what you actually can do is you see at the left corner right here where it says tempo. Now you're gonna click on this plus sign right here, and what that's going to do is that's going to tell Pro Tools that you would like to create a tempo change. And let's say we're going from keep in mind we're we're at one hundred nine. I know it says one twenty right here, but that's just the default number that Pro Tools sets it to. Um, but let's say you wanted to switch the tempo from 109 to something a little faster. Let's say there's a, uh, a pickup in tempo. What you would do is you go to where it says 120 right here, and you're going to want to change that. So let's say it climbs up dramatically. It goes to 240. So I type in 240, click OK. Now, if you see the grid actually changed right here, it actually got a little choppier. And what it's going to sound like, you'll hear the metronome actually make the switch. And you see it says 240 right here, letting Pro Tools know that once it gets to for the 41st bar, it's actually going to change tempo. So let's click play and see what that sounds like. Yeah, there we go. So if you, if you noticed, it sped up right there. Pretty fast, too. I mean, that's like some metal drumming or, or something crazy, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but it's not impossible for you to say, you know, like, I, I, I want it, the tempo to, to, to go faster here. I want it to speed up here in this part of the song. Or, coincidentally, you can actually say you want it to slow down. Let's say after 240, um, 
right around here you could click anywhere up here click anywhere up on the the top um top bar right here where it says bars and beats and click anywhere and that's where you make your change so you would click tempo again let's say you wanted to slow down to to 80 bpm type 80 it's going to create another change for you right here so it's going to originally we have 109 then at the 41st bar it goes to 240 and then somewhere in like the middle of the 41st bar it actually switches to 80 so let's hear what that sounds like you got some changes in your song you got some progressive Genesis stuff coming out. So that's about all there is to this technique. Um, what I like to do, I'll give you a little bonus, is right here, in case you don't see any of this, by the way, you can just right-click here, and, uh, and and you can just select any of the, the other uh, bars that you would like to see or the other displays. Um, I like to have markers showing, so I can leave myself little notes. Um, so let's say uh, you wanted this part where it says 240 just to be an instrumental. You want um, you want it to go from this this slow kind of like out of a chorus, let's say, and then it changes into some kind of instrument. So what you would do is you go to I just select at the 41st bar, and you go to markers right here. Click on markers. And you can actually name this something. So let's name it instrumental. And now that will forever say instrumental. So you know when you're recording, let's say you hit save, you come back the next day, you're like, fuck, why did I change this to 240? And what was supposed to go here? Oh, yeah, there was an instrumental part. Now, obviously, you'd probably have some guitar recorded here or some drums or, or something already here. You wouldn't just be going and necessarily making these changes already knowing, okay, at the first bar, I'm going to go to 109. And then at the 41st bar, I'm, I'm thinking of going to, uh, to 240 BPM. And then, you know, at somewhere in between the 41st bar and the 42nd bar, uh, I'm going to uh, I I'm gonna switch that shit to 80 BPM. I mean, you could look at it that way and you could go in and make your changes, but more than likely, your changes are probably going to switch up uh you know to how the song is after it's done so um and you won't know until you know you actually lay down the guitar tracks is what i'm saying or the drum tracks of how you want your song to be out but i'm getting ahead of myself so n here it says instrumental and that's kind of that's useful you can type in anything literally um just to give you little you know tips or little uh reminders of what you're supposed to do here let's say at 80 right here it goes to a solo you just bang so it goes from an instrumental and then to a solo at 80 bpm um and that's it guys so like i said i'll have more content coming to you guys consistently like i did before um i just wanted to you know shoot out this video give you guys something um that has honestly like i use these techniques every time i make a song you know i i, I not necessarily I will, I will have tempo changes but I'll make sure I have my original tempo to the song. I'll make sure I have my original click that I want, the the BPM and all that. And then if there are tempo changes, then you know, then I go ahead and do this. But for sure, markers, that's something that I use um, because it's it's hard to remember everything. You know, it's hard to to uh, to write everything and you know, not only write everything, but then try to remember the parts that you had written. You know, and it's. It, it can get complicated when you want there to be a specific solo or an instrumental here at a certain part and uh, if you don't have it recorded yet. So this, these are good little techniques that you can use. Um, so that's it for this video. I will uh, see you guys next time on the Band in a Bandroom channel. Uh, make sure if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button if you... Uh, if you partake in these videos, if they've been helping you guys out with your musical journey along the way. And um, if you could also, uh, if you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, um, I, I post updates on these videos and little clips and uh, little just, you know, kind of like, I guess you could say pieces of me. Um, if you guys want to get like a further understanding of who I am and whatnot, um, that's where you can find me at. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time, all right?